Allah is the one who sent these books on his messengers. And that these books are his speech. That it's his speech. Are you with me? It's his speech. And that it is the truth. It is the light and his guidance. And it is obligatory to believe in those whose names were given to us as their names were told to us. Such as the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur and the Quran. We believe in them. We also believe in those whose names we don't know. We believe in them. Number four. الإيمان بالرسل الذي أرسلهم الله إلى خلقي. The fourth one is believing in the believing in the messengers. Believing in the messengers means you believe in all of the messengers that were sent that out, and that they were all truthful in the news that they brought. Every messenger was truthful in the message he conveyed. And that they all conveyed the message that was given to them. And that we do not distinguish one from the other one. Rather we believe in all of them. In terms of belief, we don't give one superiority in belief over the other. We believe all of them the same. We also believe there are those who Allah hasn't told us about them. We know them. We also believe the best of them are five. And they are called Ulul Azm. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and our Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we also believe the remaining messengers are the best. And then the Prophets come after that. We also believe in the 25 of those which we know. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best amongst them. Very good. Number five, Al-Imanu bil Ba'ath. We also believe in the what? That the dead will be brought out of their graves. And that Allah wa ta'ala will place a life in them again. And that Allah has only brought them back to life so we can judge them. لِفَصْلِ الْقَضَاءِ بَيْنَهُمْ So we can judge them that day. And that He can reward them in accordance to their actions. In the way he which He told us in His book. And the way His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveyed to us. Number six is to believe in the qadr, the good of it and the evil of it. It means we believe that Allah wa ta'ala knew everything that has already taken place. Allah also knows that which is happening now. And Allah wa ta'ala also knows that which hasn't happened if it was to happen, the way it would have happened. That's the first point of the qadr that we believe. The second thing that we believe of the qadr is what? Everything is written for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is written for him. In the lawhul mahfuz, the third thing that we believe is what? The third thing that we believe, all of that, Allah has created it. Everything that we see, Allah created it. And they are his creation. And last but not least, we also believe everything that happens is connected to his mashia, his will. Those four those four is al imanu bil qadr khayrihi wa sharri. Brothers, that was a sharh mujmal. That was a summarized, extremely summarized explanation of what? Usul al imani, the six pillars of iman. This book, those six pillars are going to come to us and we're going to go into them mufassalan in details, inshallah ta'ala. The Sheikh is now going to start with the first one of the six pillars. He says, al imani billahi." To believe in Allah, it means from it is what. So now the Sheikh, after he gave us a overall view of the six pillars of iman, which were the usul, he started with the first one. The first one of the six pillars of iman. If somebody asked you, "What is it? To, what does it mean to believe in Allah? What does it mean?" Your response is going to be, inshallah ta'ala, after today, this inshallah ta'ala. It means, al-imanu to believe, bima wasafa bihi nafsah. That, to believe in the way Allah has described himself. Fi kitabihi in his book. Wa wasafahu bihi rasooluhu. And the way his messenger described him. 
من غير تحريف without any تحريف ولا تعطيل and without any تعطيل ومن غير تكييف and without any تكييف ولا تمثيل and without any تمثيل without any of those four so you affirm for Allah that which he affirmed for himself in his book and that which his messenger affirmed for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when you affirm it you stay away from four things you stay away from tahrif and ta'teel and takif and tamthil those four you stay away from them what is tahrif what is ta'teel what is takif and what is tamthil each one will stand over tahrif means tahrif means tahrif means distortion it's taghir wa imalatu shay'an wa jihi it means to ex- to change it's to change something yeah from its way it appears and it occurs in two ways distortion occurs in two types or two ways the first one and naw al awwal the first type is what tahrif al the actual word is distorted the word is distorted either by something being added to it imma bi ziyadat kalimatin a letter is added to it or sorry a word is added to it or a letter is added to it or a word or a letter is dis- de- 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 uh, decreased from it or taken from it or even a haraka is changed all of these is the first type and it's like qawli ahli dhalal it's like the statement of the misguided ones in which they said ar rahmanu ala al arsh istawa they said istawa is istawla istawla what did they do fazadu fil ayati harfan they added an additional letter to it wa ka qawlihim fi and it's like the statement of the misguided ones in which they said waja'a rabbuka they say waja'a amru rabbika so they added a word to it before they added a letter to it now they added a word to it fazadu this one kalima a whole, a whole word is added to it wa ka qawlihim and it's like the the statement of those misguided ones which they did what wa kallama allah who ought wa kallam allah they changed it it's, it was what wa kallam allah musa taklima what did they do allah is the fa'il here allah is the one who is speaking wa kallam allah allah spoke to musa what did they want to do they wanted to make the subject become the object and so instead of it being allahu they made it allah so they said wa kallam allah so now it becomes musa spoke to allah and that's what they wanted to get from it faghayyaru al harakata so they changed the haraka al i'rabiyyah min al raf'i ila al nasb they took it from raf' to al nasb why because of thuf that's in them. So what do we see here right now? Ziyadatu harakatin. We also saw what? Ziyadatu kalima. And we also saw what? Taghiru. Taghiru haraka. So we saw ziyadatu kalima. We also see ziyadatu harfin. And we now also see a taghir, a change that occurs on the word. That's one type and that's the first type. The second type, and now the third, second type is what? تحريف البعد the meaning is distorted the second type is the distortion of the meaning and that is the mubtadi'a the innovators they will say for example the word rahma mercy it means iradatul in'am allah wants to bless that's what rahma means they say oh the characteristics anger yeah it means iradatul intiqam allah wants to punish so they distorted the meaning of the word ar-rahma and they also distorted the meaning of the word ghadab with another characteristics with another 
characteristics. And Rahma is a characteristics. And they took it and they pushed it to another characteristics, which is Irada. Irada is a sifa that he has. And this is the characteristics in which he has. And then this is what Tahrif means. This is what Tahrif means. Very good. What does Ta'atil mean? Ta'atil means Al-Ikhla'u yuqalu attalahu ay akhla'u wal muradu bihi huna nafyul nafyul sifati is when a person he negates he doesn't give a, he doesn't give it any weight nah negating Allah's characteristics is ta'atil is to negate it subhanahu wa ta'ala and so now you can see a slight difference between a ta'atil and a tahrif. What's the difference? The difference between the two is that the tahrif, the tahrif, it means to negate the meaning that's correct, in which the text has shown. This is what tahrif means. Tahrif means that the person, tahrif means that the person negates the correct meaning in which the text has shown. And he exchanges it with another meaning. He pl- puts another word instead of there. Like for example, the word Rahmah, you, he will what? He will negate it and he will also give an exchange for it. Whereas a Ta'atil means what? He negates the correct meaning, but he doesn't put anything else in, in place. He just negates it. He just says this characteristics is this meaning is not in the characteristics. This is not what it means. Hey, what is it? It just doesn't mean this. This is a Ta'atil. Ta'atil applies to the mufawwidah, the people who do tafwid. Are you with me? The mufawwidah, the people who do tafwid, who say that these words are just mere letters. Sah? These are called the mufawwidah. So we don't know what it means. Ar-Rahman al-Arsh is tawa, mujarrad huruf. It's just mere letters. Read it. We don't know what it means. You see, that is what ta'atil means. I hope you know that you see, you see the difference between a tarif and a ta'atil. What takif? What does takif mean? Takif means giving a how to the characteristics. It comes from the word kaif. Kaifiyah to sifa. You actually give a how to these characteristics. You give it a how. You say, you say. This is the char- This is what it has. This is how it looks like. This is what it is. You see? And we know the characteristics of Allah. We are not in knowledge of it. We don't know it. We don't know it. Lidalika, when the man, he asked him, Malik al-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. He said, Kayfa istawa? How did Allah go above his throne? He said, Al-istiwa'u. Am al-istiwa'u ba'alubun. The istiwa of Allah being above his throne is known. That's known in the Arabic language. We know what istiwa means. Imam Malik is saying to him, Al-istiwa'u ma'lumun. Did he say we don't know what it means? Did he do tafwid of it? No, he said ma'lum. It's known. What's not known is like in wal-kayfu majhulun. The how, we're ignorant of it. We don't know that. Wal-imanu bihi wajibun. To believe in it is obligatory. Wal-su'alu anhu bid'atun. Asking about its hauna is an innovation. Every characteristic that Sh- Imam Malik said this too, we cannot say everything about it. Wal yadu ma'lumun. The yad is known. Wal kayfu majhulun. The how is unknown. Wal imanu bihi wajibun. Wal su'alu anhu bid'atun. We'll say every characteristic, bring it. Just, every characteristic, just change it with the word istiwa. You see? You say the same for it. That is what takyif means. What does tamthil mean? What tamthil tamthil means? Tamthil means huwa tashbihu. It is to resemble Allah with a, with something. To say Allah's characteristics is like this characteristics, such as for example saying yadullahi Allah's hand ka'idina is like our hands. Or you say wasamuhu Allah's hearing kasamina is like our hearing. And this 
is not right because Allah negated it. He said, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. There is nothing like him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is all hearer and he's all seer. In this ayah, if you look at it, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. Allah refuted two groups of people. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. Two groups are refuted. The mushabbiha are refuted and the mu'attilah are refuted. Two peoples. Who are the mushabbiha? The mushabbiha are those who don't tashbih. Are the tamthil of Allah's characteristics. They don't tashbih. They said Allah's characteristics is like the characteristics of his slaves. They were refuted in the first part of the ayah. Laysa kamithlihi shay. They got refuted. The one who also says, oh, these are just words. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Yadullahi fawqa aydihim. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ These are, are just mere words that we read. He also, he also got refuted by what? Oh, who is Sami' al-Basir? Allah is all hearer and he's all seer. So affirm, affirm these ones for him. Naam. So what do we learn from the ayah as well? Affirmation in and within itself is not tashbih. To affirm doesn't do tashbih. Tashbih is an additional thing. Tashbih is what? It's an additional thing. Meaning, if you say, Allah, I affirm for him this characteristics, that doesn't mean you've automatically fallen into, you fell into tashbih. It doesn't mean that. It does not mean that. It does not mean that. The shaykh went on to say, بَلْ يُؤْمِنُونَ Rather they believe. بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ So he's talking about what? The shaykh is talking about they believe in Allah Taala's characteristics. That's what he's trying to say. Bel yu'minuna, rather they believe in Allah's characteristics based on what? From the Kitab and the Sunnah, without min ghairi tahrifin, wala ta'atilin, wa min ghairi takiyifin, wala tamthilin. They believe it without any of those. Okay? Are you with me? They believe in it. And then the Sheikh says, "Bi'anna Allah Subhanahu that Allah Tabarak wa Taala said, 'Laysa kamithlihi shay'u wa huwa al-sami'u al-basir.' Fala yanfouna. Pay attention. This is important. Fala yanfouna. They do not negate. Anhu. They don't negate from Allah. Ma wasafa bihi nafsahu that which he affirmed for himself. Allahu Akbar. They don't negate from Allah that which he has affirmed for himself. They don't. Wala yuharrifun al-kalim an mawadhi." Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah, they don't negate from Allah that which He affirmed for Himself. No, they don't. They don't do that. Because He is the one who knows Himself better than you do. And they also don't do tahrif. They don't change the statements of Allah from His places. Tahrif, as I said to you before, what does it mean? It is taghyirun ma'at tabdeel. It is to change and then put something else in turn. Are you with me? Ah, it is nafyul ma'ana sahihi. It is to negate the correct meaning that is in it and then also place another word in its mean in its place. They don't do that. So they don't say istiwa means istawla. They don't say that. Waja'a rabbuka. They don't say waja'a amru rabbik. They don't say that. The characteristic rahba, they don't say is iradatu in na'am. Or the word ghadab is iradatul intiqab. They don't say that. They say this characteristics, we affirm it for Allah as he affirmed it for himself. In what way like it? مِنْ غَيْرِ تَحْرِيفٍ وَلَا تَعْطِيلٍ وَمِنْ غَيْرِ تَكْيِيفٍ وَلَا تَمْثِيلٍ They say that. Ahlul Sunnah. That is how Ahlul Sunnah go. Very good. The Sheikh went on to say, وَلَا يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْبَاءِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِ وَلَا يُكَيِّفُونَ وَلَا يُمَثِّلُونَ صِفَاتِهِ بِصِفَاتِ خَلْقِهِ The Sheikh said, وَلَا يُلْحِدُونَ They don't do ilhad. What does ilhad mean? Ilhad means deviation. الْمَيْلُ وَالْعُدُولُ عَنِ الشَّيْءِ That is why in the qabr, the grave, the grave, in the grave, of every person in the, the sunnah is what? When the person is placed inside the grave, there's a side that's deviated, that's diverted from the... There's a side that the person is tucked into. This is called Arabic what? Al-Lahdu. It's called Al-Lahd. When you go into the grave, you go right. And the person is tucked under there. 
and then the wood is put there. But here we don't do that in this country. You can't do that. They won't allow you to do it. So the person gets buried right in. as soon as he gets put down, he's just left there. And then the wood is put on top of him. But it should be what? It should be tucked in the side. That's called lahad. Means div divert. You see? So the person, that's how he's placed in the qabr. <coughs> so what do these people do? They deviate from its real, real meaning. And they divert towards what? A batil meaning. The ilhad of Allah's names. Yeah. Shaykh is talking about names. Remember, it's not characteristics. Talking about this asma, the names. The Shaykh said, "Well, ilhadu fi asma illahi to do ilhad of Allah's names. Wasifati and his characteristics are types. There are four types. Now, it's four types of ilhad." The first one is and to sammal as and to biha to call the idols it to call and this is what they did the kuffar they took the word ilah and they called it lat min al ilah the word lata they took it from the word ilah uzza they took it from aziz the word man manat they took it from manan <laughs> Ilhad fi asma illahi tabarak wa ta'ala. The second type is what? To, uh, to call Allah that which is not befitting for him. Like the Christians call Allah Father. Katasmiyatin nasara lahu aban. They call Father, right? Or like the philosophers, they call Allah tabarak wa ta'ala what? Mujaban or illa. Fa'ilatan. They call it these. The third type is what? The third type is what? Wasfuhu subhanahu to describe him with what? Bima yunazzahu anhu min al-naqais Describing him or attributing to him in that which he is free from that shows deficiency that we don't ascribe to him as the Jews did. This The word that what they're trying to attribute to him is it shows deficiency. As they did by saying Allah is poor. The Jews, what did they say? Inna Allah faqirun wa nahnu agniya. Allah is poor and we're rich. You see. Also, what did the Jews say? Yadullahi maglula. Allah is handed like this, tight. That's what they attributed to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Are you with me? The fourth type is what? Saying Allah's names like the Jahmiyyah did. That they said Allah's names are what? Innaha al They are just words. Mujarradatun. Just mere words. La tatadamanu sifati. There has no meanings in it. Wala ma'ani. And there's no meanings that you take out of it. These characteristics. So for example, the word they say, Fasami'u. La yadullu ala sam'i. The word Samir does not show any meaning. It doesn't show that he hears. Wala al basiru. And the one that sees, لا يدل على بصر والبصير seeing does not show seeing in the name of Allah. والحي لا يدل على حياة حي does not show حياة and the, and the, and the list goes on. Those are the Jahmiyyah. Did I say it was four? One more, five. Sorry. The last one is. When you resemble Allah to his creations Is when you When you resemble Allah to his creation A characteristics of his You take it and you give it to the creation Or vice versa Vice Versa You take his characteristics You give it to the creation Or the creation's characteristics to him Tabaraka wa ta'ala Which is what? Saying what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has something that he's unique in and no one shares this with him. What is that? Ubudiyah. Servitude. To be worshipped. This is a characteristic that's only done for him. No one else is worshipped other than him. 
you take that characteristics and you give it to a creation. You fell into tashbih. Tashbihu al-makhluqi lil-khaliqi. Are you with me? And the vice versa. Saying my hand is like the hand of Allah wa ta'ala. All of those types that we mentioned, Allah wa ta'ala has promised them a severe punishment. He subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-A'raf, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءِ الْحُسْنَىٰ فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحُدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ They will be punished based, based on the actions that they have done. Also Allah wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fussilat, Ayah 40, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُلْحُدُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا لَا يَخْفَوْنَ عَلَيْنَا The Sheikh also said, وَلَا يُكَيِّفُونَ وَلَا يُمَثِّلُونَ They don't do takif and they don't do tamthil and we explained both of those previously.